Welcome back to Shem's Universe. So today, guys, we're going to go over the richest zodiac signs. So I did a couple days to do some research and figure out statistically what sign is actually the richest in accordance with Western astrology. And then I took another day or so to figure out Eastern astrology, how they view it. So it's interesting because in the West, we value the sun sign so much in comparison to the East, where they value the moon sign or even the rising which actually makes more sense. I've learned a lot about astrology through the Eastern simply because of that. And I realized that your rising sign controls more of like your transits, what you go through day to day in comparison to your sun sign that only controls a very limited amount of your life, just your general characteristics. However, for the sake of this video, I still did look at what sun sign has the most success. And it did surprise me a bit. I was, I was thinking it was going to be like back in the day in the 2010s, it was like Virgo was number one. And then we had like Scorpio or Leo. It's not even like that at all anymore. So what's number one now in regards to the Forbes list is Libra. So the first, I'm going to give you guys a top three. The first one being Libra is an interesting one because Saturn is exalted there. Saturn's the benefactor of karma, right? So people, Libras that do very well, Saturn turns them into kings or queens. Saturn actually makes these sun signs very, very strong. Um, just quite naturally. So Libra is always about justice. Um, they they have a very cardinal nature, like to start things so they can be very good entrepreneurs. They don't like really working for people too much. If they do, I find Libras do very well in like the medical or the legal field, which would also make sense as to why they have such a great degree of wealth because both of those um, topics or niches are very, very profitable. I uh, just from from a standpoint of it's always going to be a necessity. You're going to always need a legal representation for something, whether it be good or bad. And you're also going to need medical attention just through aging or if you have a sickness. So it does make sense in that regard. And then Saturn's relation with Libra actually makes sense a lot as well. So all this stuff is making sense. The next one would be Pisces, which really surprised me. No offense to Pisces whatsoever, but this one actually had me shocked. And the reason it sort of surprised me is because Pisces is usually considered to be like this soft sign, the sign that doesn't know any better, the sign that like um, people take advantage of low key, but it's, um, it's a very adaptive sign. And I think everybody overlooks that a lot, that Pisces is very similar to like a master number, like almost like a 33. It's like a completion of a cycle. So Pisces people, uh, they tend to do very well with money simply because they can follow a very good sense of intuition or clairvoyance and they end up doing well. What I found interesting as well is that um, if you looked at it from a, um, a Chaldean standpoint or a Vedic, the signs I'd be bringing up instead from an Eastern standpoint, instead of it being Libra, it would be Virgo in that position as number one. And then you would have, um, you'd have Aquarius as number two. So that's also fruit for thought, just in case you guys want to know if you, with your Vedic sign, what it would be, it'd be slightly different. Um, but in accordance with the Western, of course, it's, we have Libra first, then Pisces. It still does make sense, like I said, because Pisces is very adaptive. So that means that Piscean people can actually like do whatever under the sun, whether it be like um, doing things in regards to forensic science, scientists, different political reformers, they just do what's necessary in their environment. So if a Pisces person is in the Middle East in the middle of a war, then they'll adapt and become a soldier. If a Piscean person is uh, living near Wall Street, they'll adapt and become a stockbroker. If a Piscean person is around Manhattan, they'll adapt and become maybe a politician, right? So that's the thing. It, it does make sense why Piscean people do quite well. Um, and whatever it is that they're brought up around like a primary example of that would be like a floyd mayweather he was like a february 24th i believe 1977 if I remember correctly and he was just in, born into a boxing family so he's like might as well just be a boxer right like it's not even like he actually cared about boxing that much it, it's a funny thing he more so cared about the money that boxing could provide than actually about the sport itself he doesn't really care about the legacy he says that a lot he cares more about his bills being paid so Piscean people are very, very adaptive to say the least. Uh, the last one is Taurus, which didn't surprise me too much because it's a fixed energy. I thought it was going to be all fixed signs for riches, but uh, Taurus did make a lot of sense to me uh, just simply because it's a it's one of the wealth houses, right? It's the first wealth house, the second house. So Taurus people, again, represented by Venus. I'd say take a note of that as well. Two out of the three were represented by Venus. And Taurus people are very much... Um, 
they're wealth seekers, right? They like very nice things. Like people that just naturally like wealth are gonna find a way to make it. So you might think you're materialistic until you meet somebody that's born under Taurus sun sign. You know, realize how like materialistic somebody could be. A lot of my friends that are Taurus have all the latest designer. They'd spend their last dollar on like just the latest clothing, latest jewelry, what have you. Like that's what they care about mostly. Taurus people are also very stable minded, very logical, very grounded, very methodical. So, and they have the confidence to actually aspire to become something great. The main difference I'd say between like Taurus and then Capricorn, why Capricorn didn't earn its spot, is that Taurus is fixed, so it's very like consistent. When Taurus people start something, they're very likely to stick with it. And if anything, you're gonna have a harder time swaying them away from what they wanna do. Capricorn people have a cardinal energy that's very good as well. Again, an earth sign, so they're quite grounded. And I find Capricorn very methodical because of the Saturn influence. However, um, they might just start something and not fully see it to completion the way a Taurus person would. So that's the only difference. I'm not saying Capricorn doesn't do that. I think they're one of the richest signs personally, but um, it's, it's definitely seen statistics like these are the three richest by far. Again, if we were looking at this from a Vedic standpoint, where Taurus is would arguably be, for Taurus season would be like Aries. And that would make sense as well due to their fiery nature, due to a high passion. So what you gotta do is like, you gotta look at your birthday and understand, use it from a Western viewpoint. Cause these, these um, statistics that I looked up are using the Western tropical Zodiac, but you can still apply your Eastern sign to it. Cause you just have to know, okay, if they're saying um, Taurus season, then that means about April 21st to about May 20th, give or take, right? And then you just get to the cusps. So when you understand that, if you know that, okay, um, I consider myself an Aries because I'm, I believe in Vedic astrology, that you can still put yourself in that Taurus position because you're saying, they're saying people born between those dates are the wealthiest, right? So you just got to make sense of it. So whether you believe in the East or the Western, why I broke it down like this is so you understand that if you're born on the right set of dates, then this does count as you as well. So it's just a bit of words of encouragement. If you don't fall on that list, all I would say is, go harder like that's me i made 25th i didn't follow any of that but you want to just go harder you want to actually just be more aggressive with your how you make your money you want to look at your things like your second sixth and eighth and even tenth house to see what ways you can make money the best go over to numerology look at your name number what ways can you make money the best what's your career what's what's naturally going to be for you what are you going to attract you look at your personality number right so all these things count but what you want to do is understand okay here's what the wealthiest people have what sort of attributes do those signs have? Look at it from that standpoint. Taurus, very grounded, very stable. Pisces, very adaptive. And Libra, uh, very karmically correct. They're very morally, um, they have a good moral compass, to say the least. The Libra people have a very, they can be self-righteous, but they want to always be able to justify their actions, which puts them in the right sequence with the universe to receive blessings. All right? So that does conclude this video, guys. If you have any questions for me whatsoever, just please leave it in the comment section. Aside from that, like, subscribe. Holla meets over today, guys. Peace.